Hi guys, there are some pretty effortless and simple habits that you can incorporate into your regular days that will help to keep your home clean and clutter free. Some of these tips will sound so simple, it'll be like, wait, does that even have an effect? But all the tips that I'm going to share with you in this video do make a difference. And the last point is especially important, and so I want to elaborate on that a little bit, so I'll save that for last. So my name is Mika and I own a small professional home organizing business and over the years I've helped hundreds of people declutter and organize their homes. I'm also a writer and I'm writing a book series about how to have good vibes in your home and I'm currently working on the decluttering book. As I write, I share some of what I've written about for the week on this channel and this week I wrote about simple daily habits that will help to minimize clutter. So getting right into it. The first thing is to keep a donation box or bin in your home. I've seen this work well in a lot of homes. It works well for homes of any size, whether you live alone or you have a big family. I do have to say though that this is especially great for homes with bigger families or for people who have a lot of clutter. This is basically a box or a bin or a bag to put things in when you decide that something can be donated. Decluttering is an ongoing process, so the cool thing about this is whenever you spot something in your home that no longer provides value to you or you find something that you know that you no longer need, want, or use, then that item has a place to go. Just by having somewhere that you can put it, basically a holding area, it increases the chances that it'll leave the house instead of staying put in a drawer, a cabinet, or a closet as clutter. On the other hand, if there's no dedicated place for things that you no longer need, you might notice something to declutter, and then maybe you'll eventually forget about it because there's nowhere in particular to put it. Then what happens over time is your home starts to feel full and then you decide to do a bigger declutter, but then there's a chance that you may not remember that item or that you'll have to rewind back to it and take care of it. But if you have a bin ready to go, then you make it easier on yourself and when it gets full, you can take it to the donation center and there's less clutter build up in your home. You want to put this somewhere that's easily accessible but not in the way and also somewhere that's in the line of sight and optionally something without a lid. And the reason that I say something without a lid is because there's less resistance and friction if you want to drop something in there. This has only happened with two clients, but they weren't really using their donation box. And so we took the lid off in both instances and then they started using it. And they also started using it often. So you just want to make it as easy as possible for yourself. The second thing is to keep surfaces and floors clear unless there's something that belongs there. So clutter attracts more clutter. It's kind of like a magnet. One day you set one random thing down, the next day another thing next to it, later in the day something next to that, and then it becomes a little dumping area. Or landing area is probably a better word. But most of these things that we're setting down probably have a home of their own. And if we have the habit of keeping fairly clear surfaces, then it encourages us to put things back where they belong and visual clutter doesn't accumulate and this can make a big difference in how a space feels. One way to keep kitchen counters clear is to leave out only a select few appliances and then store the other appliances in a convenient place that is hidden. For example, like a blender or a toaster or a juicer. It takes such little effort to take it out and put it back afterwards, but for all the other hours that you aren't using that appliance, it'll change the feeling of the space. And energetically, messes on the floor have a heavier energy. So I'm a lot about energy and the feeling in a home, and a long time ago I read in a feng shui book or a vastu shastra book that clutter on the floor of a home has a heavier stagnant energy or more of a negative energy effect. And this is long before I started the professional organizing business. But now I've been in so many homes where I've been able to experiment and see and feel the difference and there's definitely something to this. Try it. Like if by chance you have things strewn around on the floor, put those things on a chair or a piece of furniture and there's going to be a difference in the feel of the room. On kind of a separate note, it's interesting because there's something else that's like common sense but it's also feng shui, but storing clutter above the head like lots of heavy clutter, or sorry, lots of clutter, but especially if it's heavy, high on shelves has a negative impact too. 
but that's a video I will make sometime on another day. Number three is to set aside time for a 10 minute cleaning routine every day. This is just dedicating 10 minutes a day to clean up, put things away, wipe surfaces, wash dishes, whatever it is in your home that needs to be done. This can be done in the morning, right after dinner, or before you go to bed, or really any time of the day that's good for you. But the key is to set a timer so that you don't let time get away from you, and you'd be surprised at how much you can get done in 10 minutes, and how much 10 minutes a day can compound over the course of a week or a year. Number four is to utilize the two minute rule. A lot of clutter is delayed decisions or delayed actions, but this two minute rule really helps with minimizing procrastination and then also helps with accomplishing a lot of small wins throughout the day. So the premise is that if it takes less than two minutes to do, to do it right then. If you get it done right then, then there's less of a buildup and mental load that you have to deal with later. Small things can pile up and then we get overwhelmed but it relieves the pressure of our to-dos if we take care of things as we go instead of letting them pile up. A lot of times, cleaning up after yourself and putting stuff away as you go throughout the day might only take an extra 30 seconds or a minute here and there, but if you incorporate that as a habit, the future you will probably be very grateful. So if something is gonna take less than two minutes and you're not immersed in like an important project, consider just taking care of it right away so then that thing that could have been left undone or could have been an eyesore is already taken care of and it's not something that you have to remember to come back to later. Number five is to make your bed in the morning. There are a lot of benefits to this. According to Architectural Digest, a poll conducted by the National Sleep Foundation found that people who made their bed in the morning were 19% more likely to have a consistent good night's sleep. Also, dust accumulates every day, so there will be less dust collecting under your covers. And you probably have heard that making your bed in the morning helps with productivity. There's a book about this called Make Your Bed, Little Things That Can Change Your Life and Maybe the World. Basically, why making your bed ties into productivity is because it starts your day off with an accomplishment and makes the rest of your day more productive. It gives you a tiny sense of pride getting something small done in the morning and it's supposed to have a ripple effect on the rest of your day and your tasks. And for our purposes, the bed takes up a lot of surface space, so a lot of visual space. If your bed is made or unmade, it sets the tone for the rest of the space. If you have a made bed and the space looks and feels good, you're more likely to go put your other stuff away instead of just setting it aside. And again, to reduce friction, I know everyone has different styles, but I love that made but unmade natural linen casual feel to a bed. It only takes me about 30 seconds to make my bed in the morning, so ergonomically, it's super easy. <laughs> I just fluff my pillows and put the tube back into place. Number six is the perspective of having enough. A way to describe this is having an abundance mindset versus a lack mindset. When we battle clutter or a home or a space that's too full, sometimes we can complain that we don't have enough storage, yet we keep bringing things in. And that's despite having a home that's full of stuff where we probably don't need much else, yet we go on the hunt for new, new, new. There are external influences that influence us, such as targeted marketing and the ease and convenience of buying with just a click of a button. So there are things that can really help here to combat that. First, to have the awareness of the irony of trying to fill a home that already has everything that we need and doing so when we are trying to avoid spending time and energy on clutter. Second, we do need to have self-discipline, which I'll talk about more at the end of this video. And third, to be open to the perspective that there's enough in your home. Sometimes, you know, we need to replenish supplies and we need to replenish food. And sometimes it's fun to bring new things in. But overall, most of us already have everything that we need. There's always exceptions to the rule, but I have a great example of buying more, <laughs> even though there's enough. So recently I met and I helped a client declutter for the first time. 
and she was overwhelmed and just frustrated with the clutter in her home and one of the major areas of stress were the board games in the household. She had young children and as a family they played a lot of board games and board games were stacked in the fireplace area and in the storage closet and part of a linen closet and taking up room in the children's room and then there were also some in the main hallway. So as we were going through the board games, the doorbell rang and a big box arrived from Target. And she says, oh, speaking of board games, I wonder if we can make room for these new ones. And I'm like, wait, are those board, board games? Cause I was surrounded in board games. And she's like, uh, yeah, they are. <laughs> and it was almost like ironic timing. Like you had to be there maybe, but it was almost comical. Like I won't bore you with the other details, but we talked about the perspective of enough and you know, having enough in your home that you don't need to add to it because if you have enough and you keep adding, it just leads to overwhelm. And this board game example is an extreme example. But metaphorically, it can apply to anyone who's often buying new things who is struggling with clutter. And there's no judgment here or there, but it's just an important perspective to consider. Marketing can influence us into thinking that our lives aren't complete without a new something, but it is. And we often need a lot less than we think we do. And the irony is that we're usually happier without it. Number seven is to take care of your physical mail right away. Oof, this could make such a difference. Anything that comes in regularly compounds, so it's helpful to bring your mail in often and take care of it right away. And if you get a lot of junk mail that you don't want, consider opting out of mailing lists. There's dmachoice.org and optoutprescreen.com. I've seen physical mail pile up in quite a few of my clients' homes, and there are some people that really struggle with junk mail, and it's Something that, if left undealt with, can cause anxiety or stress. So because of this, I made a different video on dealing with physical mail clutter, and I will link that at the end of this video if that's something that maybe you want some advice or help with. Number eight is to do your dishes and quickly wipe down your stove and kitchen surfaces right after your meals. Basically, restore your kitchen to the state that it was before you started to make dinner and consider it a part of your meal or a part of your dinner time routine. So I'm going to dip into that energy conversation again because I had this short but interesting conversation yesterday. I was at the supermarket and the woman at the register was really nice and I told her I'm busy for the next few days with a lot of work so I'm stocking up with delicious food to cook. And she said that she loves to put on music as she cooks because it ups her energy as she's cooking. And I told her, you know, this kind of maybe is a weird thing to say, but if you look at ancient wisdom, there's like feng shui principles that speak to keeping a stove clean for multiple reasons. And one being because you cook your food on the stove and that food nourishes your body. It's something that we put into our body. So the surrounding area, the, so the surrounding energy of where you're cooking your food can affect the energy of your food that's being cooked. So if you cook your food on a dirty stove in a dingy room, say like in a room full of clutter, it's believed that the food's not as auspicious as if you cook on a stove that's clean in a room that has good energy. So by her putting on the music, it creates a different energy in the area where she's cooking. Then she tells me she totally believes that. And that's why sometimes it's also good to cook at home because the energy of the cook she believes can affect the food. So at a restaurant, you don't know who's making your food or what energy is going into your food, but at home you have control over it. And this is the last bit of the conversation because then it was time to go. But I told her, come to think of it. I have three really good friends, Raffaele, Ricardo, and Sarah, and they're all, they're each Italian and they all live in Italy. And they have each told me on separate occasions that you must cook with love. If you cook with love, the food tastes better. In fact, I was cooking something once and I stirred something, I covered the lid, and then I went to go sit at the kitchen table 
And then my friend Raffaele walks into the kitchen and he's like, what are you doing? You know, you're know, you cooking something. Stand with it, love it, give it attention and care. And he's like, it'll taste more delicious. So anyways, the reason I tell you this is because the kitchen is an important room in your home and it's where you make your food that nourishes your body. So it's good to take care of it and have a good feeling and energy in there. Number nine is meditation. This might sound strange and unrelated, but I think it's very related because a busy mind can equal a messy house. Your internal environment is often mirrored in your external environment and meditation actually doesn't take that long. And if you can fit in 10 to 20 minutes a day, it feels so good when you get used to it and it's so relaxing. And to sit in stillness every day calms the nerves and gives us stillness. Meditation actually has a lot of benefits and I'll make a separate video about this in the future. But many people with excess clutter also have busy minds. So meditation helps to still and calm the mind. And since internal mirrors external, I think it helps with energy flow in the mind, body, and that affects the immediate environment. So meditation is helpful not just with clutter, but with many aspects of life. And I think that it can be compared in a way to a computer running multiple programs all day, day in and day out. Once in a while, it can use a sleep mode or her restart. And in fact, I think it's recommended to shut down your computer once a week. But anyways, our minds do think all day, every day, and we're hurried. And this can become apparent in our mindset and in our homes, which can then become a cycle of the house feeling full and then stress and then feeling full and stress. So we can take care of ourselves internally, which will reflect externally and vice versa. And the last thing is so important and has to do with shopping. So intentional purchases versus impulsive purchases. Sometimes this can overlap, but that's pretty rare. And this one is a big one that will save you money and time and energy and keep your house from getting cluttered. So my advice here is to create the habit to make intentional purchases and rarely impulse buy. This requires self-discipline and there's different things that you can do to help with this. So if you're at a store and you're thinking of buying something, or if you're thinking of buying something online and you're on the fence, take a picture if you're in the store or a snapshot of it if you're online. And after a little bit of time passes, that urge might pass too. And you'll see if you really wanted or needed that item with a little bit more clarity. I guess that won't work at places like TJ Maxx or Home Goods or Ross and thrift stores, but for most stores, this will work. And even better is to incorporate the habit to only buy items that you really love or that truly excite you. If you're on the fence, do not buy it. If there's even a question mark in your mind, do not buy it. There's a big difference between coming across something at a store that's like absolutely perfect for you and being on the fence of whether it's worth buying or not. If you come across something that truly lights you up, it's much more infrequent. And if you only buy those things that truly light you up and not bother with the other things, you'll buy less because finding that perfect, amazing thing that you just have no doubts about, well, doesn't happen as often, but you'll also take better care of that item because it provides more value to you and you'll use it more often. The clutter that often builds up is say that sweater that we thought we might like and it was on sale or a good price, but we were on the fence and then we bought it anyways. So we wore it once and then it just sat in our closets. So that one wear cost the $25 or whatever the price of the sweatshirt was. And then it becomes a weight on you and it also takes up physical and mental space in the closet. Also, you can get off of mailing lists because they are filled with temptation. The ads might look pretty and make you feel a certain way or you might want to be in the know of what's coming out or what's in or the pictures might give you new outfit ideas or decorating ideas or whatever the marketing is relevant to but you're not missing out on anything if you don't get them 
And if you really have a hard time unsubscribing to those mailing lists, you can keep something like three stores that you get emails from. And if they have the option, you can also make them infrequent emails. Each email that comes in is also time consuming and a distraction. So this is another way that you will save time and energy as well. Also minimize shopping in general. And one good way to do this is to find other hobbies or give yourself a goal or a purpose that's a more meaningful way to fill your time. That's still really fun. You can learn a new sport or cook good food and nourish your body or have movie nights with your loved ones or go for a walk or read a book or learn a new language. The less you buy and bring in, the less clutter that you'll have to deal with. And that is a form of exercising self-care. Not shopping or minimizing shopping really helps to keep a clutter-free environment. I hope that these tips were useful. Are there any that you'll incorporate? And are there any that you already do? Please feel free to share in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you're doing and you might also be able to help someone else in their home too. In a second, uh, two videos should pop up. One is dealing with physical mail and the other is another video that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, could you please hit the like button as it helps more people to find my channel and I'd really appreciate it. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe and thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.